rainy day today. Okay, what did I read? I read this one first, which is kind of interesting because I usually hear things about China and the US in terms of drones and the conflicts. This one here says, Bombardier suspends delivery of aircraft engines used on military drones. Canadian company says it only recently became aware the engines were powering military UAVs. Bombardier Recreational Products says it has suspended the delivery of aircraft engines to quote, countries with unclear usage. In the wake of reports that some of those engines are being used on Turkish combat drones. I guess in suspending that, they make it clear it said that all Rotax aircraft engines are designed and produced in Austria exclusively for civilian purposes and certified for civilian use only. Canada suspended most export of defense technology to Turkey in October 2019 following the Turkish invasion of northwestern Syria. I guess that's one way to try to stop this type of stuff, I guess. At the same time, the other perspective I've often read is countries use things like wars or whatever to sell weapons for profits. That's the other side of the coin anyways, whichever one's a true one. And still with drones, it was kind of interesting reading this. It says, drones, stronger neighborhood watch and an open door policy for youth, part of Moro's crime reduction plan. So I believe this is for an election according to all this and his plan and vision is to use things like drones in these ways. It says, for Moro, drones are the answer to some of the city's policing problems, five of them to be exact. According to a media release issued Thursday, the five law enforcement drones would assist and provide aerial support within the city. The drones would be used to help patrol problematic areas while assisting in search and rescue and in tracking someone who has fled on foot. This is cost effective, innovative solution for a lot of problems we are facing here today, Morrow said of the drones. We need to start thinking outside the box. This is absolutely outside the box. It's effective, it's efficient, and it will deliver results for the safety and security of our residents. Not only for the police officers themselves, but for the residents as well. I'm still fascinated to see how they reverse all of the hysteria that they basically created about this stuff. All of a sudden it's okay, like in this case, will that actually make regulations more strict too? Or will they actually make it more lax? And I guess in terms of criminals, it's kind of interesting reading this because I know recently where a lot of people want to wear masks even in outdoor environments, it's basically a robber's dream, I guess you could say, like completely covering yourself up. So with that, I guess some people are getting more gutsy too, even in broad daylight. This one says, Vancouver police today released security video of a suspect at a gunpoint robbery in Yale Town in early October and are asking for the public's help in identifying him. Anyone with information is asked to call 911 or Crime Stoppers. Right at gunpoint too, just outside, just like that, in front of all these people. It's just harder to tell, I guess, because normally, I guess, stereotypically, if a guy is all covered up in that way, masked and all that, you would assume, hey, something sketchy, whereas now, it's normal in a lot of cases. I know there's been some businesses, actually, where even though there's a mandatory mask policy indoors in certain places of the country, they insist if you're coming in the store, you have to take it off like a jewelry store. That way they can identify the person through camera and all that if they get robbed. So it's kind of an interesting twist to the situation.
actually not running around this section here. See you guys later.